I yes. think he's there. Yeah. There he is. Um, Mark, I just wanted to make sure as people are coming in that you are prepared for the, um, the you can uh, prep those breakout rooms in advance, the color groups again. Uh, the, the groups are ready. I can't assign people till they get here, of course. Okay. But uh, they're ready. How long is the breakout time that you want to have? So for the 25. Time? To about 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know, I hadn't gotten myself smart about that timer yet, but if, if there's a way for you to sh set that timer so people can see it, that would be awesome. Uh, I've never done it before, but it looks like it's not hard to do. So yeah, it's, yeah. I just have to change it. For, it's set at 30 minutes right now. So I just have to yeah, change it. And, and 30 is okay, Mark. Yeah. We, we will figure out how many people we have. And that would also influence. If we don't get a lot of okay. community. I don't think it's hard to change. Sure. So <clears throat> let yeah. me know when you're ready. Okay, thank you. And then I think, Mark, like we did last time, the board members and the administrators will know which groups um, they're assigned to. And then the public, I think, will just ask them to select the group based on you know what the distribution's looking like. So you won't have to assign members of the public. Right. Um, okay, right. Yeah, that worked out okay last time. And I think that we'll just talk folks through how to do that if they need some support. That should be good. Thank you. Did you want to go with 25 minutes or is 30 okay for? I, I don't see a lot of people yet, so I think 25. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, we we so, can yeah. change it if you decide to, so just let me know. Okay. Okay, we'll let, we'll let you know. And Mark, the chat, you have it all set. As far as I can tell, yeah, um, okay. I turned it off. You, you turn it off for one person to set it to only host and co-host, and then it seems to change it for everyone. I don't see any other option there, so should be good. Okay, okay. Jen, so that you know, Vera, Vera and Jill won't be with us. And uh, okay, yeah. Do you yeah. want to reduce the number of breakout rooms by one, uh, and allow Chris and Maggie then to be in one room instead of? Otherwise, it'd be just one board member in those two rooms. That's okay. If I heard you right that that Vera and Jill wouldn't be here. Yeah, but they're in different groups, so I, right. I don't know. I think. I mean, that's fine with me. I just wanted to check and see if you wanted to combine those two rooms by any chance. I, I think it's okay. What do you think, Jen? I think it's fine because otherwise we would have too many administrators in one group too. So oh, yeah, yeah. I, that's a good I point. think it's okay. The one thing, Mark, I need to keep an eye on is um, is I might have one room where ne um, neither administrator can come due to um, due to extenuating circumstances. So if we, if we need to make a quick change, I'll I'll let you know. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. And maybe. Be too difficult. Okay. Okay. And and uh, Jen, we might want to give some support to Maggie. So maybe move uh, uh, Stephen or Jonas to Maggie's group. I don't know. What do you think? I, I just. Um, yeah, hold on, let me think about this. So we know Jill won't oh be God. here and we know Vera won't be here. Um, yeah. You know what, why don't we move, why don't we do this? Mark, can you move Chris into the green group and then just get rid of the yellow group? Okay. And then if Gillian or Julia is here, they'll just tag into another group. All right. Okay. okay. So Chris and Maggie will be green and there will be no yellow group. All right. Got it. 
Hey, Jeannie. Hey, Lindy. Hey, Jonathan. Kira. Ooh, everybody's coming up. Hey, Chris. Kira. Yeah, Flora, if we don't okay. have lots and lots of community members, we might want to just stay in one group. That. We'll see. It's going to be, I don't know. Let me, let's, let's see how it plays out here. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wait until after the first 30 minutes. The presentation. And, yeah. And the presentation. And I think we're enough people that it would be worth it to at least be two different groups. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give one more minute because I'm seeing people coming in. Yeah, and, um, and Jonas is joining us by phone and she will join and he will join us by video in a little bit too. He'll be here, Jen. Don't worry, uh, but yeah, he's I'm here. here but Soccer by game phone. is running way too long. Yeah, he's there by phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's by video too. See you. Hi, Maggie. Okay. We definitely have board forum and it's a community forum. So, should we get started since? I hear it's a beautiful day in Vermont and people probably want to get out. Eh, let's just, let's just get, get started. Welcome everybody to tonight's community forum. Eh, we're just going to go do a quick overview of what we'll be doing eh, tonight. So we're going to be learning about the current state of our work regarding teaching and learning as we embark in this budgeting process too. Uh, and also we want to continue to build trust with our community by intentionally engaging with you. So it is important for us to collaborate with you in order to have best outcomes for all our kids and have your, and have your trust. Um, I'm going to ask the board members to uh, you know, briefly just wave their hand. Everybody has a name there so that people can relate to them. And instead of introduce everybody to gain some, some time. And, and then uh, I just wanted to go just run quickly what we're gonna do. And then I have some quick norms to go through. So we're gonna uh, have a brief presentation by our leadership uh, team. And then we're gonna break up in, uh, in some uh, small breakout rooms, assuming we have enough community members. And then we'll, and that would take, so about 25 minutes for the leadership team, about 25 minutes also for our small groups, depending on how many people we are. And then we'll come back together uh, and debrief. And after that, the board has very little uh, business to, to do. And, uh, and that'll be it. So I want, you know, as we did in our previous community forum that we have. I just wanted to have some reminders. So for everybody to remember to be fully present in, in, in this meeting, try to tame the technology if you can, uh, respect others' stories or perspectives, you know, be kind, uh, assume good intentions, and recognize that we need each other in order to accomplish this work. <laughs> and um, there is no wrong questions. This is a completely safe place to speak and to ask your question. Always learning, they said in her previous newsletter, you know, anything in education is constant, is change. So we're always learning. There's no experts here, at least among the board members. <laughs> and, uh, and the last thing is for, for board members also to, to remember that our face tell a lot and I am very guilty about that. So, you know, like they say, fix your face, just make sure that when you're listening, to community, especially that we're, you know, eh, not putting our own bias in our own expressions. <laughs> so that's uh, that's it. And having said that, I will let uh, Jen, our interim superintendent, get us started. So thank you. We have um, we've prepared a brief presentation for you all, which is a um, a summary of the implementation plan and what our current state is. So I'm going to share my screen with you. 
And let me just get it into presentation mode. Hold on one sec. All right, can you all see that okay? Okay, I can't see you. So I'm just gonna trust that it's okay. And leadership team, I am gonna, I'll go ahead and advance the slides for us. You let me know when you're ready. So um, this is a, a presentation that's a number of us who put together. Floor, I would invite you if you would like to um, talk a little bit about the history of the mission statement and read it out loud for everybody. Yes, uh, of course. So the Washington Central Unified Union School District exists to nurture and inspire in all students the passion, creativity, and the power to contribute to their local and global communities. Uh, this statement, everybody can do a little dance. It's about five years old now. <laughs> Ooh, as a, so before consolidation, we uh, unified in, in this uh, mission statement. And this started back in 2015. Actually, Carrie lit, led this work through the uh, Education Quality Committee back when we had a full board. So it is something to celebrate <laughs> tonight. Uh, more specifically, um, as it was said, when we passed this in March 2016 as a, as a, full, as a full board, what we're hoping to have is long, uh, lifelong learners in our in our district, and uh, the Washington students, uh, the Washington Central uh, students will will meet or exceed as academic skills and abilities that uh, prepare them to be long, long life long long life learners. <laughs> so, you know that is just just brief. There's more to 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 talk about this, but it is a combined. It was, uh, it was combined with our student learning outcomes work that we did a number of years ago. So it's really, it all, it comes together in this, uh, in this statement. Thank you, Fleur. So when we created the implementation plan back in 2016, we used um, some work about uh, theories of action and strategic planning and strategies in action. And we created as a leadership team, primarily this particular statement that is our theory of action. So I'm gonna invite you to take a minute and read it. And I wanna say just a few opening remarks about this theory of action. I think the principles of the theory of action are still definitely guiding our work. And we're recognizing that our thinking and our language has shifted and evolved over time. So again, this was 2016 and we're not using the language of achievement gaps as much as we're really talking about differences in student performance um, between groups some historically privileged and some historically marginalized groups. That's in alignment with our work around humanity and justice and equity, and is aligned with the way that the state is talking about um, identifying groups of students uh, for, for you know, scrutinizing data. And so again, differences in performance is sort of the more nuanced language that we're using. The other thing that um, it's really important to be super explicit about is again, this implementation plan was dated uh, 2016 to 2021. And here we are in the 2021-2022 school year. The plan is still relevant. Um, we recognize that um, engaging in this body of work um, as we prepare to budget and think ahead about the next big body of work and strategic plan and vision for our school community is going to be important. We're going to break down for you in a little more specificity um, where we are and what we still need to do. So, so Kara, you're up. Yeah, thanks, Jen. So these are the three strategic objectives that Jen has referenced. Um, and tonight, we're going to learn more about each of them and how we're putting them into practice. Also, as Janet referenced, some of them have been fully realized and others um, were just getting started with them. So these three strategic objectives, as well as our student needs and our moving forward plan will be at the forefront of our work together um, as we move into the budget process this year. Thank you, Kara. Yeah. 
Kat. So, thanks. Over the next few slides, we're going to dig a little bit deeper into each one of these strategic um, objectives. The just a quick overview of clear learning targets. The learning targets are aligned with our SLOs, our student learning outcomes, and our performance indicators. The learning targets um, are something that are communicated in a variety of ways in um, each classroom, posted in the class, articulated during instruction, and something that's revisited at the close of each um, core block. We have PD modules on clear learning targets that we introduce every year in new teacher induction training. Um, and it's something that is has can regularly over the last few years been revisited in each building, just wherever it's necessary. One of the ways that um, administrators check in to ensure that this practice is regularly occurring is during walkthroughs. We check in with students and say, hey, what are you doing? And why are you doing it? And what makes it important? Hoping that we're going to elicit a response that um, tells us that these le learning targets are really clear to them. And um, again, this is something that we're going to keep taking a, a, a look at over the next few slides. This um, slide talks a little bit about what our plan had been and where we might be in each one of those major areas um, over the, fi the five year plan. Um, I think at the elementary level, it's important to think to note that our clear learning targets are a part of our routine. Um, instruction. Again, they're aligned with the SLOs. Um, I think the only other thing that's worth noting is that we did a lot of work over the last few years to revise our report card system to align them better to these standards, though there is still some work to be done, um, especially around parent-friendly language in uh, the elementary report cards. I think Stephen, um, I'm offering a few things about U32 in each of these areas as well. And so we've been working um, for several years with these standards uh, as part of our proficiency system. And, and we've actually started into a process of revision now. Um, so we've started to revise some of our standards by areas. So global citizenship and science both are, um, are revising their standards in order to create more flexibility. And, uh, and last year, we, we started in the process of really clearly articulating the personalized learning plan uh, process. Uh, so we're trying to create courses in Canvas for that work, and Canvas is our learning management system, and really checklists that uh, better inform our families and students about the personalized learning opportunities and flexible pathways. Um, Act 77 is what drove a lot of this work um, for us. And, uh, and I would just say that we've really worked with our students and our parents to try to make our personalized learning plan process much more accessible, but certainly an area where we're just growing in. We, we specifically waited on doing that work because there was quite a bit of work around the proficiency system as a whole. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk a little bit about our second strategic objective, and that's the overview um, of our comprehensive and balanced assessment system. We have designed a local comprehensive assessment system or plan. We call it the LCAP, um, and it includes statewide assessments like our SBAC, local assessments um, that we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about, like iReady and our BAS assessments in literacy um, and benchmark expectations. We look at these in the fall, winter, and spring each year. We also use multiple sources of data to inform our understanding of student performance. So we don't just look at these three times a year, one time a year assessments, but we use multiple data points um, and provide feedback to students and families about next steps in student learning. And we've also adjusted some of our practices over the years as we found assessments that are better aligned to our expectations. Um, some example we used to use the STAR 360 for, to assess math, we're now using the iReady math diagnostic. Um, and most recently this summer, we revised our early literacy assessments through Curriculum Camp. And similar to what Kat shared with you a couple of slides back, this is kind of the overview of where we thought we would be several years ago. So the check boxes, the green check boxes show where we, we were working on and then the little wrenches just showed um, tuning. We're not quite where we thought we would be, but that's okay. Um, at the elementary level, the LCAP, 
has been refined over the past couple of years based on teacher feedback and our experiences, um, including just some, some changes we made during the pandemic. Our youngest students also now have tablets um, and Chromebooks, and we're able to deploy more devices. And that also is a bit of a silver lining from the pandemic. Um, we've built three half days into this year's school calendar, um, really for the purpose of analyzing assessment data and planning accordingly. So we were thoughtful about when those dates were and what they would look like. Um, we've increased access to interventions across all of our schools, and we're in the process of reconsidering our what we now call multi-layered and what you see here is multi-tiered systems of supports in order to be more responsive to students' needs um, and really to emphasize the importance of excellent first instruction and our practices related to EST or our educational support teams definitely need some more um, examination and revision. Right, in addition to that, that uh, work that's being done at the elementary schools, a lot of that extends up to us at the uh, at U32 in the middle and high school. Um, we've been using the data that's collected through this system to help uh, guide our intervention structures and, uh, and really make sure that our standards and performance indicators are aligned across grade levels so that we can meet the needs of our students. Um, we've been graduating kids for a few years now under the proficiency system, and so that we feel as we fully realized, although plenty of work to continue in that to, to refine it. And certainly uh, there's areas where we need more student reflection in the whole process in our PLP process and in their learning processes. And so that student reflection is a big part of making it a balanced assessment system. So it's not just um, quantitative, but also qualitative work that we're doing as well. Okay, I have the next slide. This is around high quality instruction and interventions. And as you can see, uh, one of the pieces is that all students will achieve at least one year's growth each year, but students with gaps in their learning will achieve more than one year's worth of growth. So this is where we talk about, you know, closing the achievement gap, or at least the old language around that. Um, we see students making progress through their year, but those that are behind need a little bit more intervention to make sure that they are catching up and being at, at, at grade level. Uh, so we've done a lot of really fantastic things in the district that I'm personally proud of that um, um, do support students and teachers around high quality instruction and interventions. Uh, one of our strengths is our instructional coaching. Uh, and this has been established and even increased the amount of instructional coaches uh, over the years. Um, I think this is a really fantastic way to say how we are presenting and conducting professional development because it's embedded and that really is some of the best ways to help staff develop professionally is that embedded professional development. So these folks are employed, they're in our schools, they're teachers um, uh, and their, their model around, around really looking at their best practices um, has really been established strongly and continues to be um, established more recently. Our mentoring program and new teacher training is a staple of, of our district and how when new teachers come to the district, um, they are uh, introduced to how we do things around here. Uh, we have a strong mentoring program where uh, teachers new to the district receive a mentor or are assigned a mentor. Um, mentors have a level of training at the beginning of the year and then throughout the year, they're meeting and supporting that that new teacher. Um, and in August, before teachers even start, um, we have multiple days of, of teacher training that we, that we provide and offer. Our one-to-one -one technology initiatives uh, are really strong in our district. One-to-one um, -one technology can be a number of different things, including Chromebooks or tablets. Um, right now, I am comfortable to say that that is pretty much what we are mostly using, uh, our Chromebooks, tablets, um, and maybe the occasional phones, cell phone perhaps with some projects. Um, but having strength in our, our uh, technology infrastructure, um, other tools like our Google platform, Canvas, Infinite Campus, uh, Seesaw even, um, the pandemic, you know, helped us really almost force us to learn some of these, these online platforms a little bit better. 
Um, so teachers are more comfortable um, and students are more comfortable using technology as a uh, means of, of, of learning. Um, restorative practices, responsive classroom, um, positive behavior, intervention supports are, are other systems that we use to help establish positive learning environments. Uh, responsive classroom and, and PBIS are seen more at the elementary level. Um, responsive classroom is a way that teachers establish positive learning environments in their classroom um, and help build a sense of, of, of a learning culture in their classroom. A positive behavior intervention systems supports are, uh, is, a, is, is an approach to, at its core, positively uh, reinforcing behaviors so we can then build better expected outcomes um, around around correct behavior. Um, this is a really tried and true method that a lot of our schools are using. Restorative practices are a little bit more seen at the middle and high school level, but I know the elementary schools are, are starting to dabble in this, uh, including Berlin as well, so I'll say that. And um, I know Stephen could probably speak a little bit better than I can about exactly the details of it, but it's really a way to to look at or address an issue or a problem um, and working together with those that are affected or involved to really understand what happened to really give everybody a voice to the the issue and how it, it has impacted others um, and even working together on what are the next steps and what are the 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 outcome is going to be. Um, and really at its core, it's it's a way for those involved to learn from the experience and not just somebody saying, you did this, you're in trouble and learn that way to not do it again, but rather um, a more understanding of, of, of the issue. Uh, flexible pathways, multi-tiered systems of support are still in the works, uh, especially at the elementary level. Um, Multi-tiered systems of supports are a way to look at data and ensure that our systems within our schools are uh, helping meet the needs of, of all kids, whether that be strengthening tier one, which is instruction at the classroom level, to the next level um, of, of intervention, um, and even up to um, further supports around, around special education. And uh, finally, around trauma-informed practices, this wasn't part of our original planning of our implementation plan, but it's an integral part of our consistent learning environment. So our timeline here, you can see that for 2020 and 2021, I think we might have the most green check circles for implementation, still things that we are working on. And instructional coaching, again, increased coaches this year, uh, flexible pathways, one-to-one -one technology, I mean, I would say I think is pretty strong for our staff and students. Um, and then multi-tiered systems of supports are, are ones that we are, are still working towards. Yeah, and Aaron, a great uh, description of restorative practice. That's a, a big foundation at U32 um, that everyone is trained in um, as adults and that we're starting to train students as um, as leaders in that program as well, when we look at creating those uh, good classrooms. Our TA system is a foundation at U32 that's been there and, and really helps us maintain um, strong uh, communication and, um, and really helps with our, our, that, that area. I would also offer that um, a lot of our instructional practices and, and what we look at in high quality instruction is through our supervision evaluation program, which really doesn't show here, but it's an area where, uh, where we really try to consistently grow and make it more, um, more useful for our teachers and their growth uh, for them as well. Um, and we've been adding the coaching into that. And then when we talk about flexible pathways, this is something that is really um, a big feature of U32, where we have things like our pilot program, our branching out programs. Uh, we send students to uh, Central uh, Vermont uh, Career Center. We have early college and dual enrollment. So there's a lot of different ways that students can move through, demonstrate proficiency, and be successful at U32. And so that's certainly an area of strength. And just as, as we mentioned earlier, that uh, multi-tiered or multi-layered systems of supports that we're trying to, to build in there, um, we, we have work to do in that area. And so we, we really, we have, we have room for improvement, um, but we are certainly doing a lot that helps our students as well.
We know that emotional well being impacts a student's engagement, school attendance, and academic success. So, adding emotional wellness support increases success in other areas. The three pillars of the Moving Forward Plan are informing our work and our planning. So we hope that this presentation was an, a good overview for you in terms of our assessment of where we are right now. And um, the purpose of the community forum is to really hear from the public as well. So these are the questions that we framed that we were hoping to discuss in breakout rooms. Um, we got feedback last month that the small group breakout rooms are really a highlight of the community forums. And so we wanted to replicate that opportunity. Uh, the board members are going to facilitate the small groups. The administrators are present to take some um, notes that we can then share back with everybody. Um, again, when we're in those groups, and we might make adjustments, I'm going to stop sharing in a minute and see if we need to retool based on participation. Um, make sure, please, that all voices are heard. Mark is going to um, set a timer for the small group, so we were thinking about 25 minutes. And then when we come back together, we'd like an opportunity for each group to share. So we're hoping that um, you can identify someone who's willing to share a key insight in your group um, or a, you know, a key question that came up. So that's the hope for the next 25 minutes or so, and then we'll come back together. And I just want to take a peek. Floor, you can help me if we want to reduce the number of breakout rooms or not. Um, I, I think we should, Jen, uh, just reduce one more at least because we're just 33 overall. Yeah. So what do you think? I'm going to say, um, Mark, let's have the pink group. Um, let's close out the pink group. So that means Stephen, Look, and Jonas. Um, how about uh, Stephen, you can join the red group. Jonas join the orange group. Um, and Jess and Chris, um, feel free to join any of those groups and be an additional administrator. Just don't both join the same group. Does that sound okay? So that gives us five groups. Yeah. And then members of the public, um, what you'll do in a minute is we'll get we'll open up these breakout groups, the board members and the administrators will go to their assigned rooms and then we're going to invite you to put yourselves in a breakout room and um, you'll do that by by um, hitting that icon and then you should be able to join we can help you mark fine and I can help you troubleshoot that if you need help. And we're just going to ask when you make the choice to do that that you distribute yourself so that you'll have plenty of air time and attention. Diane, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I, I'm noticing that like, I know Jill's not here and I don't know if there's any other board members who are not here. So when you put Jonas in, I don't know if you were mindful of that, like Maggie's on her own in that room and I'm, and so, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we did, them. Diane, thank you. We took care of that part already. That part's good. Other questions um, about the process before we break into those groups? Floor, anything else that you feel you need to say before we break into groups? No, let's go ahead and move. Okay, so Mark, if you can please open those breakout rooms, that would be great. All right, so members of the public. So uh, I see Jimmy, um, whoever's on the iPhone, Cindy and Mac, go ahead and join. Do you, do you see how you can, those color groups? Do you see how you might be able to join those? No. Okay, Jimmy, can you unmute so I can hear you and try to talk you through it? Okay. Do, on the bottom of your screen, do you see a place that says breakout group groups? I do see that. So if you hit that button, tell me what you see. Yeah. I see and red, then, orange, green. 
So you should be able to hover over one of those colors and have an option to join one of those groups. Do you see that? I see the- That's helpful. I can uh, put someone into a group if they oh. let me know which one they want to go into. Mark, that would be great. Ginny, can Mark just assign you to a group? You can assign me to a group. I was going to go to purple because it's one of the smaller ones, but put me anywhere. Perfect. Yeah, Mark, purple would be great. See you later. All right. There you go, Jenny. You should have the option to join the purple group. Thank you. All right. So, Chris, do you want to, Chris, you can feel free, I'd say, to join any of those groups right now um, because I think that. Um, you will just be a, a fly on the wall in terms of listening since we've collapsed those groups. So go ahead and join any of them. Uh, I can see that blue could use some members, it looks like. Awesome. All right, so I think Chris will try to go to blue. Um, Lisa, please, would you like me to move you to blue? Do you wanna go to a group, Lisa, or do you wanna stay put? It's up to you if I, if, do you think I could go in and take notes for a group? I will, if you want. If not, I might just try to tweak the minutes from the meeting previous so that I can get them to Kari. Yeah, I think you're good then. Because okay. the administrators are taking notes. Yeah, okay. I'm yeah. just gonna hover here then if it's okay. Okay. I don't know who the iPhone is and I'm gonna join, um, I'm gonna join a group in just a minute, Mark. And did you set the sure. timer, Mark? Uh, it's at 25 minutes, yes. Okay, perfect, thanks. Welcome back everybody. That felt really quick. I don't know if it felt really quick for everybody else, but <laughs> really quick. So let's, let's open that up for, uh, for each group to, to debrief and, and let's start with, we changed the, the groups uh, a little bit. So let's, let's start with the red group. Great, so we had one community member in our group, um, but we had let everybody participate, uh, whether they were a board member, an administrator, or a community member. So for the questions, um, one question was, what are our next steps as this plan ended in 2021? So really looking at the timeline and um, that the grid ended in 2021. So what will, um, when will we add on next year's and make a plan for that was one of the questions. And um, the presentation, there was a question about where can um, the community members access the presentation. Um, another one was about, we were wondering if it, if it had been updated since it was first developed. Um, so like a green check versus a wrench, um, if that had been updated recently so that it was up to date. And if not, when would it be updated? And um, there was a question about printing packets and if they needed to be, if we needed to spend money making them look pretty or is the data enough? Oops, sorry, I, give me just a second. Um, so the current strengths of the district were um, that really grateful that students were able to participate in sports this year, um, instructional coaching model, trauma-informed, um, or being trauma-informed, having one-to-one -one technology, our ability to change um, the level of communication has been good, um, that the community is feeling really well informed between the communication from the district that Jen is sending out once a week and the communication at school, it feels like enough. Um, the restorative practices that are ha happening at schools um, current areas for improvement, um, outcome data in reading and math, and not sure if um, assessments are an accurate way to measure. And that was it from us. Thank you so much, uh, Caroline. Yeah, I'm gonna jump to the green group, Maggie and Chris. Whoever took notes from your group. Um, uh, or was, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, you want to do it? Okay. So um, we didn't have any community members in our group. 
So it was just us, and we had Stephen also, Stephen Look also in our group. Um, for what questions do we have? The question was what Aaron was, Aaron was great. What, um, what do they see as our current strengths as a district? So um, this was directed towards Aaron and, you know, the supports that we have in place um, to support teachers and students. Our technology infrastructure is really strong. Our progress in curriculum and our systems to roll out curriculum are strong. Um, our teachers are our strength. Our central office is a strength. Somebody is always available. Um, and then what are areas for improvement? Um, there's not enough time in the day for everything. That was the big thing because something everything is important to somebody and how do we prioritize our time? So, um, and then um, our, talked about um, our mission statement that it's really broad and um, it can't all be equally important. So, um, you yeah, know, we need to think about a, um, um, you know, it all can't be equal for everybody. Um, so that was, that's the majority of it. <laughs> Sorry, I have people talking in the background. No, no worries, Michelle, it's okay. Yeah. That's it. We, we had community members, so I'm gonna move that orange group ahead just because we had two community members and I know we didn't have a lot of community members and I'm gonna let Kara or Kat I can go hey, through our. We had more questions than in the other two departments. So do you want to summarize? Yeah. yeah, I could go through our questions. We spent a good bit of time there, as you had said. Um, we had Jen with us for a little bit of time to talk about um, just some details in the implementation report related to teacher licensure and some shifts through the AOE and how that's impacted uh, Washington Central evaluation cycles. Um, and then we had some questions about implementing MTSS and sort of how, how are we get into it just now when No Child Left Behind came out nearly 20 years ago and just sort of looking at the iterations of that and what we've learned with that over time. Um, we also looked at how are kids making gains? So if students are not meeting expectations, is there time allotted to meet those needs? Um, and then we talked about how is support aligned with the student needs? So how are we sure that student supports complement rather than conflict with the general ed learning? And so we spent, again, the majority of our time talking through those and thinking about that. And then for strengths, the majority of our strengths focused on um, shared values, engaged and interested school board members and community members, um, everybody seeking to move in the same direction and believing strongly that kids can learn and supporting teachers is important in achieving our goals. Um, some challenges, um, questions about knowledge lacking or lacking knowledge related to implementing effective interventions to support students and um, some, some conversation about talking a lot and not necessarily being too concise and needing to narrow that down and boil that down to clear measurable goals and more data-based decision-making. Thank you, hey, Kara, that's great. A purple group? Steven, Suzanne, Kari, okay. Uh, do you want me to take it, guys, with the notes? Um, I'm happy to. Well, we were uh, lucky enough to have Virginia Burley with us as a community member, and she was uh, wearing her hat as a WCUUSD Friends of Education uh, person, and she wanted to know how they can help. That was really her big question. And Stephen responded with, we need staff. <laughs> and if you can spread the word and let them know, we have lots of positions open and we need uh, people in our buildings to work. So um, encourage folks to come out during the budget process to help advise the process and impact decisions. 
So we had a, a conversation about how uh, the friends could help out WCUUSD. Um, and Kari asked how we can engage the community more and let them know what our timelines are and what our topics are, what else do people wanna hear? Uh, and Virginia suggested that the friends group do a survey for us to ask people what they aren't getting and what they, what they need from us. Um, McKaylin uh, offered up that she, being new to this, she has a lot of questions and how do we more broadly communicate to the community? questions about the assessment piece, a lot of panic because of rumors about kids not getting into college uh, due to our changes in assessments. And Stephen offering up that a, a ton of outreach has been done, to co done with colleges to make sure that uh, what they need is what, they, what the, the high school is giving them. And it's going to change again, it sounds like. And how do we get that information out to everyone so that people are well informed? And how do we make sure that people new to the system or starting out know what the academics are? Um, McKaylin offered up that she uh, really appreciates the PLP and that it's at the heart of where the district has been since the beginning and valuing the arts, sports, and traditional academic subjects without putting one ahead of another. And she's glad that this is still a part of the district. Uh, Virginia offered that they are not hearing much from the community because everyone's minds are elsewhere right now, which we're all <laughs> familiar with. Um, and Stephen is really proud of the district for how many hours of in-person in instruction was done last year, uh, especially elementary and middle school being in the buildings full, full time and how important that was to people and families. And Virginia agreed. Uh, Kari, um, suggested that we have a lot of communication uh, as parents and board members with weekly updates from the superintendent and principals and what a good job the, uh, they are doing as administrators communicating with um, folks. But then Virginia offered up in the, the last column what we could do better. Uh, as a non-parent, she hears nothing from U32 um, and suggested regu more regular posts from the, the schools um, on Front Porch Forum. Uh, and McKaylin definitely uh, focused towards communication and community, um, suggesting that a lot of people are depressed right now and unsure of how to re-enter the world and if the schools could be a place for people to do that. Uh, and Virginia pointed out uh, specifically the seniors in the community used to be able to go to plays and loved it and can't do much of that anymore. And how do we um, bring them back in as soon as we can? Uh, and Steven said, yep, we love having them and we want to have them back and we can't wait till we can. And we ended discussing um, our focus on MTSS and how we have uh, SEL layers and supports for kids and they aren't getting those services from other places and how difficult that is on the school. Um, and Virginia being conscious of the role that grandparents are playing doing the heavy, heavy doing some heavy lifting right now uh, in family units. So that's it. That's great. This is, that was a lot. Great, thank you. It, so we have the last uh, group, the blue group, uh, Alicia and Amy, Scott and Ursula. Uh, Alicia? Amy. Yeah, Alicia got booted Alicia. off. Oh, she, she got, got booted, booted off. off. She's trying to. She's trying, she's to, trying get to get back, back in. in. Uh, Maybe so Amy Mark, or Mark. Do you Scott? see her? I'm having a hard time with a really barking dog right now. So Scott, if you can take this <laughs> for a second, that I can get her calmed down. <laughs> yeah, I'll bark instead. <laughs> uh, we had unfortunately um, no community community members. I. Um, I suggested that maybe if 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 we had a good old fashioned roaring controversy, we might draw more of a crowd. And Amy said, "No," and that was that. Um, but we essentially, uh, Alicia, um, and I. As soon as she comes back, I would like to turn it over to her because she was the note taker for this. Um, uh, Alicia said, "Okay, you and Ursula." you meaning me, and Ursula are, um, are the community members. So uh, why don't we um, 
I mean, why don't we talk with you as if you two board members were also, as you are, community members. And um, there, uh, Ursula, let me invite you also to jump in if there's anything you think <clears throat> needs to be said. But um, we, we didn't say much about the implementation plan, did we? No? At I least, didn't um, think we did. We, yeah. we didn't touch much on the implementation plan. Okay. And um, when it came to strengths, uh, I think the, the basic idea was that there really are so many strengths, um, too many to enumerate. Um, and our main concern as far as the implementation plan went was to ensure that those strengths continue to be um, nurtured and, um, and furthered. Uh, in terms of areas for improvement, uh, the, the main one um, certainly that struck me is in the data, the, um, the all grade IEP percentage pro testing proficient in math at 1% and testing proficient in English at 4%. Um, that is, um, that just chills me to the core. And um, we just talked about how do we, how do we make that better? And um, it's, a, it's not an easy question, but uh, you know, I think it's one certainly that that Alicia and Amy um, felt very keenly the need to um, you know to address. And Alicia, um, Alicia made the point that she believes the board should do what we used to do much more often, which was to have data presentations, like the data presentations in the fall, and that we should be. Um, this, these are. This is essentially what Alicia was saying that we, the board, should be holding the, the principals accountable the way Stephen Look in um, Days of Yore would say, um, you know, how are you gonna meet this goal? Um, what are you gonna do about this, um, you know, this number in order to make it better? Um, Alicia said, you know, she thinks that if we as a board were to, were to be mindful of the data, to include the data as an ongoing part of our own discussions, that um, this will help to generate ideas and generate the, um, you know, the energy needed in order to, to get at these very difficult problems. Ursula, is that more or less Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what we Amy? talked about. I think we spent some time talking about the trauma-informed approaches yes. and how they felt that it was going and what they needed, if anything, to continue or improve on that. Yeah, thank you. That's right. And Amy, is there anything else that I may have missed? Uh, Scott, I think that was it. <laughs> Dog stopped barking. I, I see how you got him to stop barking. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> uh, no, I think you covered it all. Thanks a lot, Scott. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Thank you. Okay. So that's the end of the blue group, and I'm going to pass it on to, to Jen. Well, first, thank the community members for, for coming. I know there were not a lot of us, so next time uh, we, we're going to have to do more of a personal effort to send emails to, to make sure that people come to, to the meeting. So uh, I'm going to pass it on to, to Jen. Um, first of all, thank you, everybody, for engaging in this conversation. I think that um, the hallmark of a, of a learning organization is that we take time to acknowledge what is going well and what is areas, for, you know, what our areas for improvement are. And I think we were able to accomplish that tonight. I know from all of the coaching work that I've been doing that um, being able to acknowledge no matter where we are in a process, what's going well and 
building on that is the way to continue to generate hope and optimism and momentum. And so I appreciate that um, folks were able to, to take that long view as well. And we will just continue to use this as a source of data again, very intentionally tonight doing this community forum and this focus as a um, way to lay the foundation for the budget process because the budget really should reflect our values as a learning community. And we've heard about um, areas for improvement and areas of strength, and we wanna be able to, um, to build a budget that's gonna honor those things. So thank you. Well, thank you everybody. The, uh, Jen, do we have some hires? Do we have a little, cause I'm gonna let the public go and the board yes, can we have do a, couple a little of, business. Uh, yeah. We have a little bit of business, yeah. So thank you everybody again. It, you're welcome to stay to community members and administrators. We have just a little business to, to conduct. And again, uh, thank you. We look forward to seeing you at our next community forum. Uh, thanks again. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Recording in progress. Let's move right into it personnel and just getting myself there. Okay, could I have a motion? From page 18. Yes, please. Lindy, I don't want to steal your thunder. I, moved, I was trying to. Uh, <laughs> I move to, to approve an extended leave of absence request from Christiana Martin through January 18, 2022. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, could I have a second? Second. second. Oh, okay, uh, I'm gonna give it to Diane. <laughs> okay, Jonas moves, Diane. Second, uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, next one, please. Uh, I move to approve a change in FTE of an increase of 0.2 FTE for Ellen Dorsey, WCUUSD Assessment and Professional Development Coordinator. Thank you, Jonas. A second? Second. Thank you, Ursula. Any discussion? Yeah, this seems really relevant to what we were talking about in our group. Um, this seems like really good, a uh, really good thing. Agreed. And can we can we get like thirty seconds about how we came to that decision, and oh. and what this will Jen. mean for professional development? Yeah. So this is. Um, as you know, I have shifted away from the curriculum director work. Ellen Dorsey has been a longtime uh, teacher of mathematics and instructional coach in our district. She's been working point eight, and um, she's been assisting in her instructional coaching role um, with a lot of this work, assessment and professional development in particular there. Uh, a woman, she's a woman of many gifts and strengths, and these are two of her strongest. And, um, and so she is, uh, we, we posted for a point two to help to fulfill some of those former responsibilities that I was filling for this year. And um, Ellen was interested in doing that work and it will be an honor to have to work alongside her to do it. Thanks, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Okay, all those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, none. Uh, the motion carries. Welcome, Ellen, to your new role. Okay. We have, have one more, I believe. Yep. So I move, I move to approve a change in position uh, for Amy Molina uh, to be U32 assistant principal, and that is moving to a licensed position from a non licensed position. I have a second. Second. Got second. Any discussion? 
Just wondering. Um, I'm just going to do a happy dance, but other than that, <laughs> it, yeah. Go ahead. So just yeah. wondering about the, um, is this filling a position? What What is the change? Just just to have the background on that. Yeah, I think Stephen is Stephen? prepared to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so Amy has been in the role uh, that we have called student affairs director for several years now. Um, and what that was, was a way for us to have additional support in our middle school. So she handled a tremendous amount of student issues, um, also other duties as assigned by the principal, um, which I could find no shortage of things to assign to her during that time as, as student affairs director. Uh, during this time, she has gotten her uh, license uh, to be an administrator. Um, and so um, what this really does is moves her into the administrative role of being able to supervise and evaluate teachers as well. Um, U32 has had, um, so I actually did a chart to make sure that I understood what had happened since um, Keith Garrett was there. So the year before I came, um, which is a longer time ago than I, I hate to admit um, <laughs> at this point. Um, but we've always had uh, five administrators at U32. And over the course of the years, we've tried to um, reduce in areas. So we tried to split our assistant principal position between that and uh, special education uh, coordinator or director, um, depending on the year. Um, but we've always had five administrators. So what we're essentially doing is moving her over from student affairs director, and we will have no one in that role. That role ends. Um, and they will have a uh, principal, two assistant principals, our student services director, and then our special education coordinator. And those are the five roles. Um, in the past, uh, Amy has kind of been in the assistant principal column uh, at times, uh, but not being able to supervise because she didn't have the certificate at the time. Thank you, Stephen. Any, any other questions? We're ready to, is ready to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, congratulations, Amy. And thank you. Okay. So that is all the business that we had that, that we had for today. Any, since it's early, I was hoping to finish up the a little early. Any board reflections? Uh, we oh, actually we I, we forgot to put the the survey in the chat, Jen, for oh, getting you know feedback. What? I did put it in the chat, um, but oh, you I, did okay. I did, and I oh, I um, see it. Yeah, yeah, it was there, and um, I'm also happy to follow up with a few folks that attended to just ask them for feedback. That's easy enough to for me to do. That'd be great. Any yeah. any board reflections? Otherwise, I'd let you go have some belated dinner. Okay. Well, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Second by Chris. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Recording Good night. stopped.